Here at Happy Canyon Vineyard, it's easy to mistake Tom Barrick for a typical winemaker. If you look at the vine, the, the vine itself is capable at every level of growing these kind of berries. But you, he looks the part red hot, and hot even hot sounds hot. like an expert. Kind of. Each cluster is hand sculpted to make just the right umbrella area to nurture that particular bunch of berries. Then as the season goes on and they become more ripe, then the, the quest is getting to that perfect sugar content of knowing when they're gonna be harvested. But Barrick is anything but typical. He's a billionaire investor who made his money in real estate. I was the most ignorant guy on the block. He could have bought a trophy property in Napa or in France. Instead, he built a vineyard from scratch on this 1,300-acre ranch near Santa Barbara. But buying a great vineyard to me is the same as competing against Goldman Sachs and Morgan Stanley in an auction of a company. And my young people come back and say, we're so happy we just bought this company. And I say, well, that's great. What did you do? And they say, well, we outbid Morgan Stanley and Goldman Sachs. I say, are you kidding me? Is that that's how you make money is by paying the highest price on somebody else's auction? Lessons learned on Wall Street, applied here in sun-drenched Southern California. It's exactly like investing. You may have a great year, and you may get a little confident and think you found the tools, and then you get a little arrogant, and that next year Mother Nature says, let me teach you a little lesson. Barrick started growing grapes at Happy Canyon about 20 years ago. How did you decide what kind of a wine you wanted to make? Well, it's, it's like all things. I knew that I had no clue. <laughs> I just knew what I liked to drink. But what I liked to drink was anything with a cork. I didn't have the taste level. So I surrounded myself with five or six of the smartest people who did have that level and said, you guys figure it out for us. He knew who to call. Barrick's investment firm, Colony Capital, previously owned one of Bordeaux's top wineries, Chateau Lascombe. This place, this little appellation, has exactly the same characteristics as Bordeaux. Soil, temperature, sugar content at the end of the season. We've got a, about 60 planted acres split between Cabernet Sauvignon, Merlot, some Petit Verdot, some Cab Franc. We produce four wines that are, that are a blend of it all. We end up with one and a half or two tons per acre, which is not much. So a commercial wine producer would produce five or six tons per acre because they wouldn't be culling or curating all they these They go for yield. They go for yield. So again, it's, it's like investing. You can buy 10,000 mobile homes or you can buy one great apartment in Brooklyn. You decide what you want to do. Barrick, a deal maker since the 1980s, finds parallels in business for almost everything he does at Happy Canyon. Like polo, another passion. Everything I do as an investor is about risk management. And the main thing is avoiding disaster. So the game itself became a place for me to practice risk. During the polo season from May to September, Barrick hosts three matches a week at Happy Canyon. And players, most of whom are from Argentina, regularly practice on his two fields. Polo and wine, they're two expensive pastimes. Barrick says he isn't too bothered that the winery doesn't make money. What's more important is having a project his children can share for decades to come. Plus, he points out, vineyards have proven to be great investments. If my family is interested and passionate and continues to leave it a little bit better every year than the year before, we've been successful. What do you say to somebody who looks at this and says, that guy Tom Barrick, he's raising polo ponies, he's growing wine, but he's not doing it for a living. He's just a rich dilettante. What do you say to that person? I say, come and live with me for a week. If you can keep up with me doing what I do to make a living for a week, you can then be here and think that you're a rich dilettante. Business is a physical sport, and you better wake up every day and get out there and compete. Because if you don't, somebody with cleats on is gonna run right over your back. So I'm not at the point of letting somebody run over my back, and I'm not at the point of taking anything for granted. So I'm, I'm very thankful.